Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 10. My name is Chris Makut, and in today's episode, we are talking about offensive and defensive leadership. Throughout the ages, the world has seen many different kinds of leaders. Good ones, bad ones, and, well, some very, very bad ones. From Gandhi to the Godfather to, I don't know, Gandalf and Genghis Khan? The world has been shaped by a bunch of guys, well, mostly guys, who have hailed from all corners of the globe to lead the masses to either greatness or destruction, writing themselves into the history books forever. Despite their obvious differences, one common thing unites them all. For better or for worse, they've absolutely done it in style. Outstanding leadership takes vision, it takes skill, and it takes a little bit of style. But what type of leadership style is most effective? How do we know? And what exactly do we call it? Well, it really depends on who you ask, of course. But one hot-button conversation about leadership happening right now revolves around the research conducted by a leading business guru, Brene Brown, who came up with the concept of armored versus defensive leadership. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm not the greatest fan. But before I tell you why, let me explain in 25 words or less what armored versus defensive leadership actually is. In a nutshell, then. Armored leaders focus on being a knower and being right all the time, whereas daring leaders focus on being a learner and getting it right. There, simple. If you want to learn a little bit more or put a little bit more meat on those bones, armored leadership. Apparently, armored leaders protect themselves by being know-it-all, cynical perfectionists who foster fear criticize others, never offer recognition, and run their business like a cult. Does it sound familiar? Daring leadership. On the other hand, daring leaders live, love, and lead with a whole heart. Whatever that means. And this is where it gets a little tricky for me. They allow themselves to feel. And they model kindness and hope for the future, as well as as self-compassion and empathy for others. They are also learners who are interested in finding the skill to get it right rather than displaying a need to just be right. And they identify and embrace fear and uncertainty while setting appropriate boundaries and supporting their team to be inclusive and diverse which in turn fosters a culture of belonging. Now, if I read that last description to you out of context, you could be forgiven for thinking I was reading the manifesto of a hippie commune in Santa Cruz instead of sensibilities and skills of a 21st century super leader or a daring leader. To be honest, though, all of this is just common sense, right? I'm not certainly saying that I'm an inspirational super leader, but any decent leader knows that a mix of what I guess I call defensive and offensive approaches, what Brown calls armored and daring, is essentially in being truly effective at all levels, whether in terms of achieving financial goals or fostering harmony and productivity within an organization. After all, no professional business person wants to work for a deranged dictator who rules with an iron fist and uses scare tactics and bullying to achieve their goals. But at the same time, nobody wants to work for a raging hippie with flowers in their hair and a heart of gold who rolls from a place of vulnerability, love, and compassion either. Now, I don't mean to get all defensive myself here, but I don't get it, that is. I just don't get the terminology or the concept of the armored leader versus the daring leader. 
Both terms seem like an unnecessary convolution, a slightly pretentious repackaging of something that's pretty obvious. I mean, why use the word armored in the first place? I get the idea that insecure leaders suit up in their metaphorical armor every day because, well, they're insecure. But that's nothing new. Insecure people are always defensive. It's in their job description. Defensive creatures, whether human or animal, lash out at those around them, especially when they feel their importance or power is being diminished. So why not just replace the word armored with defensive, which leads us to defensive versus daring leadership. Personally, I think it sounds better. It's alliterative, at least. And to my mind, it says immediately more than armored versus daring. And what about that term daring? To me, it's a little unwieldy, too. In this context, the word daring seems to suggest that leaders should dare to be vulnerable without protecting themselves at all. They should dare to wear their heart on their sleeve and live, love, and lead with their whole heart, rather than suit up in their metaphorical armor and wage war on the world and their own team. Okay, I get that. But the term also suggests a sense of recklessness, at least subconsciously. After all, it's daring to jump off a 50-floor high-rise without a parachute, but it's also very stupid, obviously. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for being reckless in life. God knows we need to let our hair down once in a while, especially given recent events. But I'm not reckless in business. Bold? Yes. Open-minded? Sure. Avant-garde, even? I like to think so. But the idea of being recklessly daring in my book is bad for business. So in celebrating your vulnerability with naked ambition in the face of a stiff and cutthroat competition. The truth of the matter is that in leadership, just like in battle, a good leader needs not to only display both a bold and brazen attitude, let's call it an offensive approach, with a more careful and contained and calculated one, let's call it a defensive approach. They also need to be able to communicate effectively with those teams. Again, that's nothing new. Good leadership, to my mind, demands a careful mix of both offensive and defensive approaches, which is why, frankly, I think the armored versus daring model should be termed offensive and defensive leadership. You'll notice there's no versus in the equation because we need the best of both. In business, just like in battle, leaders are always fearful, always vulnerable. But that doesn't mean we have to clad ourselves in armor and hurl commands and threats of death at our troops from behind a self-made parapet. No. It means we live, love, and lead from the heart, drop all of our armor, and run naked into battle. The ancient Celts tried that one against the Roman army, and trust me, it didn't end well. And on that happy note, in the name of leadership, I'm off to find a 50-story high-rise and from the heart, lead myself right at it, naked. This is Chris Makut. See you next time. Maybe. Stay safe out there.